week's Facebook Live. Um, and I'm going to talk about family members and toxic family members in particular. And yes, I know the title of this week's blog says, um, you know, it's it's the holidays. And I know there are, like, you've got can in Canada Thanksgiving coming up. Um, you've got Thanksgiving coming up in the USA. We all have the big C coming up, not that far away now at this point. But it doesn't necessarily mean any particular event. It could be, you know, um, a bank holiday weekend that you all get together on. Um, it could be a family occasion, a wedding, any occasion where, you know, there's a lot of your family members that you don't see perhaps during the year or you may not have seen them for quite a number of years. But on this occasion, you're going to have to face up with them. So the tips I'm going to give you here is just dealing with toxic family members that you feel on this occasion whatever it is you have to deal with so that's what we're going to t talk about today the first thing and the very first important point you have to get through your head is you never have to put up with interact with these negative toxic people this is your choice as an adult now i realize that people might disagree with me but a lot of the time it's ingrained in our psyche that we have to interact with these people as children. So what we don't realise is we're now adults. We can make that decision for ourselves, whether we interact with this person or we don't interact with them. And sometimes, you know, not realising that can take away our power from us. But when we do realise it, it gives us back a certain level of control and it certainly is very liberating mentally. So it really doesn't matter what time of the year it is, what holiday it is, what special occasion it is, you know, because there are so many holidays during the year. Um, but if we feel we have to interact with them, remember, you don't have to do it. But if it is unavoidable for you, if you feel, no, nope, I'm going to suck it up and I'm going to have to do this, then that's what we're going to deal with. The second point I'd like, like to make here around this is if your childhood wasn't ideal, you know, anything, any event where you have to now deal with these toxic people again is going to come up with such an array of emotions and memories. It's going to be very hard for you. It's going to be a stress for you to deal with. So, you know, we need something that will allow us to take back control, as I said, and that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to give you six tips. Just bear with me. Um, they, They're interlinked. And the first one I'd say to you is make sure you know what you want to happen. OK, because this is about setting boundaries and setting boundaries with toxic people is quite hard. But setting boundaries with toxic family members is even harder still. So if you make sure you know what you want to happen. So, you know, we can't plan for every event or every thing that's going to happen in this case. This is what I'm talking about here. But you can play it, plan you can set the agenda and that's your first step is to set the agenda so you know the the question here is what are you prepared to put up with um who are you prepared to put up with um you know what are you not that's the main point of this now i've listed out a number of questions in the blog i'm going to read them out very quickly but if you want them go and check out the blog i'll leave a link to it in the description below so what events or family gatherings will you attend it's your choice you're an adult what will you attend? How long will you attend for? You can set a time limit. It's up to you. Um, who will you engage with when you're there? You know, who will you talk to? Who will you not talk to? It's okay to do that. Um, you can be polite and civil, but not engage with them. Okay. Um, you know, as, that's the next question. Like, who will you engage with? Who will you have those discussions with? Who will you get up and walk away from? Um, you know, who will you minimize your time around? Uh, what topics will you discuss? And what topics are off the table for you? There'll always be a family member who will bring up that topic. They know your buttons and they'll try and push them, particularly toxic people. Know the answers to these questions. This is going to help you set boundaries and also push your plan in place to handle the situation that you're going into. So let's go into a bit more detail on that. So number two, make sure you're looking after yourself first. So you have to be actively managing your stress here, um, looking after your basic basic self-care needs prior in the run up to the event. Always in the run up to it. You know, this stressful event 
is going to happen. It's going to be even more stressful than your normal day to day life. So you need to be actually managing your stress and looking after your basic self care needs here. Um, do not make the mistake of letting these go. And we we do that, particularly in the run up to the big C that's coming up in, in a couple of months time. So, you know, try not to do that when it, because people get more, you know, it's busy. Some workplaces, it's the end of year. We're even more busier with that. So please try not to let these basics go and manage your stress. So you can use the acronym HALT. I make this suggestion in the blog. And this means stopping what you're doing right there and then if possible and look after your basic needs. So the HALT stands for hungry. And if you feel you're hungry, then eat something. It also stands for being anxious or angry. So if either of those, you know, are coming up for you, you need to move away and get yourself calmed down. Um, if you feel lonely, make contact with other people. Okay, we will withdraw when we're stressed. We will withdraw when, when we feel that anxiety coming up. Um, so we you know you're feeling lonely you want to reach out to other people and make positive people okay keep up that sub positive support system and this is part of managing your stress but it's also part of looking after your basic self-care if you're tired finally on this uh, HALT acronym ask for help or simply sit down and take a break we can be you know Divils for not doing that. We we just don't don't look after ourselves. So if you can just remember that, halt and make sure to be looking after yourself. Three, add in some acceptance. Now with this one, this is about you know the other person. We have to at least get to a point where if we do decide to interact with this toxic person, we have to remember we can't change them. We didn't make them who they are. We certainly can't change them and you know you don't have control over somebody else so it tends to get a lot easier when you even acknowledge those points can't control them didn't cause whatever's going on with that person you know and you you can't change them so when when you do that you can kind of go okay i can accept that that's the way they're going to be they're going to be toxic i now know what they are it doesn't mean though when you accept when with acceptance and we, we get very fearful around acceptance and forgiveness because it doesn't mean you have to put up with bad behavior you still set healthy boundaries and this is important so this brings me back around to putting the plan in place those questions i asked you at the start will help you set your boundaries number four part of your plan is to plan ahead and have your deflections ready. So who will you talk to and about what? And part of if they're going to go off on, you know, one of these topics you don't want to talk about um, or they're becoming particularly nasty or, you know, there's always somebody in the room that you, they're louder and, you know, they get drunk or whatever. And you don't want to have to deal with that. Using deflection can be part of this. One way to do that is actually if they bring something up is to deflect them away with topics they you know they like to talk about, be it football, soccer, um, it could be you know some other sport they like, perhaps it's something they, they do, a hobby you know they do. Family members you're going to know. Their favourite topics. Get them talking about their favourite to topics. This way you're going to deflect them. Um, or you could point out that help is needed. You know helps at a table help with kids help make part of the meal prep the vegetables do something um you know have a list of ideas you know your family members you're trying to get them off topic or move them away from you so have a list of ideas that you can use beforehand with the different people and then simply be prepared to use them um, if you do have to interact with tox toxic people in your event in your family sorry uh, a point you might want to consider is not to host the event itself. You can say no to hosting. If you're always the go-to person for the hosting, you can say, no, not this year. We'll come to you or somebody else or we'll go out for a meal. That way, when things get too much, you can get up and leave a lot easier than if it's in your family home. Number five... And this one's going to be hard, particularly with siblings, but never take the bait. What I mean by the bait is 
they will know how to push your buttons. Don't take the bait. It is hard. Again, your plan ahead. I bet you he or she is going to bring up such and such a topic. Then you need to plan ahead. Deflection here is going to, you know, is going to work. But also think about not drinking, particularly around people that we can, can be, you know, raise the drama level of the event, um, cause a lot of drama. Um, so by not drinking, you're more in control of yourself. Um, you know, you're less likely to say something um, that you'll later regret. But again, you can use deflection here. You're in better, better shape to keep to your plan using deflection. Use other people as buffers as well as a good idea. Um, you know, it, and if it simply doesn't work, if, if doing, you know, all those doesn't work, then get up and leave and leave that person talking to themselves. Yeah, if they're very, you know, if they're they're very dramatic people, they'll probably cause a scene, but you're walking away, you're not going to listen to them. Um, you know, you can leave it is an option. Um, and and chances are like if if you find this person toxic or difficult to deal with, other family members are going to be finding the same thing. And they do understand. They do understand what that person is like. So having that set time limit um, you know, getting involved with the kids. So focus your attention there. Particularly if you're not hosting, you can do that. Take the kids out for a walk, uh, outside to play. That may give you enough time to actually put a buffer between you and, and the other person and for things to calm down. And if that doesn't work, have a signal ready with the kids and with, you know, with your other half that it's not time to leave. I'm out of here. Um, you know, we're out of here. Let's go. It can be very subtle, you know, simple as to send them a text. Um, but you can use a subtle symbol, you know, play with a necklace or something or start twiddling your ring. You know, it's time for us to leave. Um, you know, the other thing you can do is, you know, use other means of anchoring yourself emotionally. So, you know, again, move away from others. Use a three minute breather. I have a link to that if you want to learn how to do it in the blog. Simply slip off to the bathroom, three minutes, recenter yourself. Other thing you can do is, you know, the old count to ten in your head. Keep counting to ten and backwards. Um, you know, the whole idea here is move away from that person. Um, leave, focus your attention somewhere else. Calm yourself down. Give yourself a breather. Um, you know, help out with the person hosting. Um, as I said, play with the kids, things like that to focus you and get you up and moving away from this person. Um, again, part of your plan. This is part of your plan to keep you focused on how you're going to deal with this person. And again, as I said, number six is actually around, you know, if they're drinking, you're drinking. Don't don't drink. As I said, you know, we're only going to add fuel to the fire. People get drunk. They say and do things that they're going to regret. Just don't be one of them. You know, family arguments are can be particularly emotional. Um, they can be particularly confrontational, and even more so when you add alcohol into the mix. It's only for a short period of time. You set your time limit. You can arrive just before the the meal. It's time to sit down for the meal and leave. Not long, you know, fifteen minutes say after dessert or the final course is served. Leave then. You're going to visit somebody else, the other side of the family. You know, they don't know whether you are or not. You know, have your excuses ready. Get up and leave. Um, you know, it is only um, for a short period of time. You can go home and have a drink if you want one. Just go home and relax with the kids. You can do that. Um, the other thing I would say to you is um, support your mental health after the event. It's not just about the run up to it, where I said to you, you've got to be managing your stress and looking after your basic self care and putting your plan in place now. It's also after the event, it's very stressful dealing with toxic people. So after the event, you need to support your mental health as well too. So it's important to do some kind of a purge um, to get rid of that emotional toxicity that you've just in encountered. Um, you know, let your emo emotions out. So this could be, Journaling, a stress journal or anxiety journal, if you're already using one, talk to a positive friend, 
reaching out to that positive support system is vital going to the gym you know get out the anger um punching a pillow if you're not a gym member is you know do something like that get up and out all that emotion have a good cry if you need to release that emotional toxicity from your body um so it's it's very very important that you do that um reach out for support as well if this is bringing up so much for you um and you feel even as an adult you can't say no to something or someone then perhaps it's time to talk it through with a therapist so please reach out to support your mental health in this case um, it's vital and a therapist, you know, um, will be able to support you in um, in dealing with toxic family members very effectively and very quickly. It's surprising how quickly um, we can we can help you move on from from this sort of trauma. So I leave it there. As always, I'm happy to ask any quest answer any questions. Sorry. Um, any questions I've listed, I've, I've read out, they are in the blog, so do go check them out. I'll talk to you all next week, so thank you all for listening live. Thank you all for those who watch in replay, and I'll talk to you all again next week.